With mobile applications, I think it's very important to just help out your end user by, um, you know, just a little thing. So maybe you want to save that little preference that they have um, for like, you know, remember their um, username whenever they log in or remember which uh, theme they set, like the dark theme or not. Um, just save those little things um, and let them do that in their application so it will uh, be more personalized and look and behave the way they want. Um, one way to do that is with the Examiner Essentials Preferences API, which is a great API that allows you to um, implement these preferences, setting, saving, loading, clearing, um, by just using a few lines of code. Let's check it out. Okay, so here we are in our um, file new Xamarin Forms application. Um, this is the default template that you will get whenever you do this on Visual Studio for Mac 2019 or Visual Studio for Mac on Windows. Um, and um, as always, if you have been following my videos, let's do the important bit first and update that title right here. So let's make this the preferences sample. There we go. And save that and hot reload. Make sure that I will see the latest date uh, whenever you're running this and just editing XAML. So that is very cool. Uh, but we're here to actually implement like the preferences. So let's get all of these labels here out of the way and add an entry box. And I'm going to give this an X name so we can reference it from our code behind. Of course, this all works with data binding as well. And let's just name this uh, random label um, and we'll use it at that. Let's give it a little bit of a margin so it will looks nice. Um, let's do 20. There we go. So we have this little entry here. And uh, you know what, let's also add a switch. So we can see the same thing um, with like random switch. There we go. And boom, we have a switch. Let's also give that a margin so that it looks a little bit nicer as well as far as a sample application should look nice. Okay, so there we go, switch, a um, little bit of an entry here. So we got this going for us. We got the UI basically ready. Uh, but you know, imagine that this is maybe a login form or some kind of other thing that you want to persist the values of. So that is something that you can um, do with um, the Xamarin Essentials Preferences API uh, with just a few lines of code. So that is pretty awesome because now, you know, what happens whenever we do this, uh, we go out of our application here, we close this, we got other samples here. I open this again and you can see the switch. Well, it doesn't even, <laughs> it doesn't even deploy here because hot reload only um, runs it uh, at runtime and it doesn't actually persist it. So it should deploy the new version that we've created here. Um, and whenever I do that, you can see nothing is persisted here, right? So the value in the entry is gone. Um, whenever I switch the switch, yes or no, um, is it's not persisted at all. So that is something we we want to fix right so um, imagine that this is like the login screen maybe um, there where you want to save like the username um, and and with this switch is like the remember me switch yes or no um, and depending on if the user toggles that then maybe you want to save the values in here and and help them a little or you maybe you want to save some other settings um, like like preferences that they might have because you know it's the preferences plugin so that might be a good use case um, so let's see how to do that let's go into our code behind of our main page right here. Uh, of course, I'm showing this in iOS, but this also works on Android, UWP, maybe some others as well. Go check it out in the documentation. No further setup is required. I have the Xamarin Essentials NuGet already installed here. Um, in this uh, project because you know that happens when you use the default template it's already installed for you ready to use um, so what I can do now is just go in here at the using Xamarin essentials and um, from there we should be able to access the um, preferences dot and here you can see the methods that are in here so the clear you can just clear out all the um, preferences you can check if it contains a certain key because you know it's just a simple key value store um, um, also good to note because you know you can only use basically like the simple type so strings date times uh, integers doubles that kind of things uh, booleans as we will see in a little bit uh, but nothing like you know all kinds of crazy um, complex things um, so you could get around that by you know storing whole 
little JSON things in there, JSON blobs. Uh, but you're probably not gonna want to do that because you know whenever a string gets too large, um, the performance will be not so great. So this is just things for like little pieces of preferences that you want to save here. Um, what else do we have? Like the get, so you can get a preference from the store. Uh, you can remove a certain item and not just clear out the whole store, uh, or you can set a certain value. So let's have a look at a couple of these. Actually, I'm gonna go back to my main page a little bit and add a button just so I can trigger uh, the saving and, and that kind of things of uh, the preferences here. So I don't need a name for this, I do need a text. Um, and let's call it save preferences. Um, whoops, let's make that a little bit nicer so it knows how to do that. And maybe, um, you know, clear. So just so we can see that we can clear all the things. So uh, we got those set up. Let's add a clicked handler for both of these. And another one here, clicked. Uh, another new handler, there we go. Uh, so this should do something now. So let's work with the save preferences first. And what we're going to do is um, do into the preferences and we are going to um, set a value actually. And um, we are going to do a key. So this will be like the uh, random, random text here. Uh, so that's our key. That's the thing that we can reference this value by. And uh, here you see a lot of overrides for like all the different values that are supported. So this is a Boolean, this is a daytime, a double, a float, an integer, a long, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, so you can also see this shared name showing up. All the methods in here have this shared name uh, that you can also use, uh, which basically allows you to create separate containers for different stores. Uh, there is a important note in the documentation about that. Uh, you should use this whenever you want to share maybe these preferences with your watchOS app or your Android watch app. Um, so go check it out if that is something that you need. Um, you should go to the documentation that's linked in the video description. Um, but that is something um, that you uh, should look into. That's not going to be covered in this video. I'm just going to use the simple um, version. So, um, and what we want to do here is the random uh, label um, dot text. So here, this is the way how we save the, the text. Um, and the other thing we want to save is like the, the switch value. So again, we're going to do this preferences set um, random uh, switch. And we're going to do the random switch dot on, I believe. No, um, what is what is the toggled toggled? Is that it? No, that's the is toggled. There we go. See, I should use the switch more often. Uh, the is toggled, so there's that. Uh, so now we save the actual setting. So this one, the other button clicked was easy, right? So we can just um, do the dot clear here. Uh, so that should say uh, clear all our, our preferences. Uh, again, you can see like the override for um, if you want to use that other container. So the shared name is one of the overrides. Um, so if you're using that, make sure to, to do that as well, that you're not clearing out the wrong store. That would be uh, not great. Um, um, and whenever this page comes up, uh, we are going to do like the other way around, right? So we are going to set the random text, um, oh, random label dot text to preferences dot uh, get. And the get has a nice way of getting this. Uh, so you can do the uh, the key. So I'm doing magic strings here. You probably don't want to do that. You can use like a, a static string uh, or a const string or whatever. Um, or you can do like name off whenever you're using this in a, a property value. Uh, but for the sake of this um, sample, I'm just going to do this with a, a magic string because you know, who doesn't love a little bit of magic from time to time. And um, you can also specify like a default value. So whenever something is not found in the store, you can um, specify a, a default value that you still want to get back. So that's a nice way of setting like your preferences default values. Uh, so if we go think back to the case of like whenever you have a login screen and you want to maybe remember that person's login credentials, um, you can say, okay, I want to get this Boolean value if the remember me is uh, true or not. Um, and it's by default false because, you know, we don't have any data. So um, the default value will be false. So that's pretty cool. Uh, in this case, I just want to back the string empty and for our uh, random switch it's the same thing is toggled is going to be preferences get um, random switch 
And so here we actually have that exact case where we just specify false. Um, so whenever it, it has this key, it will return the value that's in there or else it will return the default values. That's pretty cool. Um, so let me stop and rerun this again because uh, these changes have not been deployed yet. So uh, let's do that right now. It should come up pretty soon. And whenever I now start to enter something here, something random like, you know, um, do you want to subscribe to my awesome channel? Um, you know, just something random. Uh, did you do it yet? That might be a better question. And then with the switch, you can say, yes, I did it. Uh, and then whenever we save preferences, that's the, the really cool part about this. So uh, this app was deployed right now, so I can just kill it here and restart it from here directly. And whenever I go back, uh, you can see that these preferences are persisted. So I didn't do anything. Uh, I just loaded them here uh, from the uh, constructor of my page. So this could be you know, something whenever you go to the settings page of your application and um, it will uh, just show you the settings from right here. So that is pretty awesome. Um, now, whenever you uh, want to clear these preferences, I'm just going to press the clear here um, and I'm going to kill it again and go back here. And we should see that the um, default values are coming up. So that's the string.empty and the false for my switch. Um, so that is how with a few lines of code, you can implement like this really cool preferences system, um, which is really great. And that's how you can go about saving, clearing, saving some more, removing just one key, do all the things. So this is usable with data binding, as I already mentioned, or from the code behind, like I did in our sample application. Um, but you know, this just uses the native APIs that are behind this on iOS, Android, UWP, uh, maybe some other platform, go check it out. Uh, MacOS is supported nowadays in Essentials as well, so that's pretty cool. Um, there's one thing I want to note about these uh, settings is that, you know, whenever you delete the application, the preferences are gone too. Um, there is one exception for Android. Um, I think there is a certain build uh, target that you should have. Um, is it level 23 and up? API, um, go there and check the documentation to be sure. Uh, but whenever you target that API level and you have auto backup enabled, then it will take these preferences and it will back up that to the cloud and put it back into your application on another device. So um, that's something that happens. Um, for other devices, it's just whenever your application um, gets uninstalled, then the preferences are gone too, which is mostly what you want, right? Because these preferences are just um, for that um, application that install. Um, but, you know, just good to know. Thank you for sticking with me for another episode. Please let me know in the comments what you think. Like this video, subscribe to my channel, and then I'll be back before you know it with another video. Until then.